Hey everybody, this is Way to Fail, and we are back with some more Scrolls live commentary. Where today we are going to be taking on a ranked match just to see what I can do here. And just so you know, I have been experimenting again with that deck that I showed you last time, the uh, Growth Energy. I've been tweaking it a little bit. It's still not where I want it to be. It plays a little oddly, so I still need to clean it up. I tried adding in some Dust Runners. It, it just it just isn't as good as my mono growth deck right now, so I think I need to sort of figure out what I want to do. So I'm going with the same deck I had been using. I've debated using a Quakeless deck as well. But Quake is one of those cards that for all the times you have it in your deck, you don't feel like you need it or you're too behind for it to be useful. But then the moment you take it out of your hand or you take it out of your deck, it's, oh, look at all these situations. So pretty much we're just going to go and see if I can bump up my rating a little more. If I can, great. If I can't, oh well. But I do have the Summoner mod installed, so we're going to be able to get some bonus things like being able to see who my opponent, which is Grand Fruit today. You can see that he is rated. I'll go ahead and get these stats up. He's rank 2000, rated 1588, so good guy. Right now gets out of Veta early, so I know exactly what I'm doing with my Ragged Wolf right away. So I get a lot of cards here, and I don't know why I have an up and down arrow instead of a cursor. But beta's beta, so I don't know if that's going to show up in the video or not. Let's go ahead and take out that better so that he cannot ramp up. If this is a growth deck, yeah, we'll see if it's a growth order draw god deck. I don't know if that's what you want to call it or not. Then I'm going to want to hold on to this quake to try and take out some stuff. But for now, we're just going to go ahead and axe some of our cards and see. I'm going to, I would like to get rid of that quake for resources, but I don't want to preemptively do it if it's going to be super useful for later on if he starts pumping out a bunch of stuff because I am seeing more growth order draw decks actually when I was testing my deck and playing a lot of unranked games I was seeing a good number of them which is a little interesting to me so we'll go ahead and sack the bear paw for resources and see if we can keep our vetter alive So there we go, and turn, and then it's going to be up to Grand Fruit. I am totally expecting him to fertile soil that. And it looks like, well, we'll see here in a minute what he does. Just got to wait it out, because I'm not going to hold on to this Quake for too long. Like I said, it's just a back pocket kind of card that I want. So there's a Frost Beard that he's putting on the very front row. Interesting. That Frost Beard's not going to do a ton to protect you, buddy, but... Let's go ahead and start getting some creatures out of our own. Starting with the... Actually, starting with the Kenfolk Veteran. I want to go ahead and take that out before he can do anything to buff it, so... Kenfolk Veteran is good for defense. And so here we go. One down. She gets three attack for killing him. But that's not going to kill this guy. So, small miscalculation on my part, perhaps, but... See, now she's going to drop something in front of it. Maybe I should have waited till next turn to attack, but... I mean, like I said, I just don't want him to be able to buff, 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 and kill, so... Looks like that guy's going to die anyway, regardless, so... Let's see, I have five energy now. Let's see what other cards we can get. Crimson Bull. I can actually take some of these things out, but I kind of want to save the Crimson Bull for a minute because I can actually drop the Kimfolk Veteran down here and I'm just trying to clear his board as much as I can. At this rate it's probably looking like this is a mono growth deck so once again it's gonna come down to if I can take out his stuff before he takes out mine right now I have three creatures on the board we're reaching quake territory here for him but I do have some cards to follow up which is always what you want to do with quake and I feel like I'm a broken record saying that so there's a Kenfolk Veteran and a Frostbeard. So he's using his Frostbeards to tank, which is interesting. And I'm debating what I want to get rid of. I think I'm actually going to get rid of... Well, let's see here. The Totem's going to be good if I can get a lot of creatures out. I'm going to get rid of the Crimson Bull at this point, and let's get another energy. Because this Mangy Wolf will be able to take out the Frostbeard. I just don't really want him to do that. I want to kill these guys on the same turn if I can. So we should be able to do that assuming he doesn't pop anything in between. So let's go ahead and actually, as weird as it sounds, let's go ahead and drop the brother of the wolf down here. 
so that way we can play some defense. And if he has a rallying that can take out some of these things, so be it, but I can just get him back. So yeah, that Frostbeard, that's pretty good use of him. I mean, he's trying to get his Frostbeards killed, which I know a lot of people really want to protect, protect them. But the plus two buff is possibly worthwhile. So it's a different kind of strategy than what I play. So there's your Death Cat Berserk. And so he's... So that's interesting. So he managed to kill that guy. And now we're just going to have an attack here. Of course, I can kill him with the Vetter if I drop my Ancestral Totem. So I like having the Mangy Wolf. I like having the Great Wolf. So, But I think getting more cards is going to be more valuable at this point. So there we go. Rumble and Bear Paw. All of those are good. We'll see. So for now, we're just gonna totem this and put it down there. If he wants to try and take that out, that's fine. More important is that I'm gonna take out his kinfolk. So good thing I didn't get rid of that. I mean, the Crimson Bull could have helped there too and I could have possibly gotten out some more things that turn, but... Right now, I just wanna keep up the pressure. And we're gonna see real quick, he has four growth here. I don't know why I got a frog in my throat all of a sudden. There we go. So I was expecting the fertile soil or something. And instead now what we're going to do is go ahead and sack the rumble because we don't have a lot to move at this point. I could bear paw the kinfolk brave, but the better solution at this point is just going to be to go ahead and great wolf down here. Go ahead and kinfolk here. And we will actually go ahead and summon a wolf up here just to buff this guy. So a little bit more idle damage. I'm starting to overwhelm the board here. So once again, if he has a quake, I'm fully expecting it. I don't think I said good luck, have fun. That's a mistake on my part, I guess, because it's late or early or whatever time it is right now. We have Grand Fruit. You have seven. You've got some cards in your hand. You got more cards than I have. It's a little interesting, I haven't run into any of my Banes yet. That's something I tend to like to use early on growth creatures, and it's kind of a luxury that I haven't needed to. Would love to get a Mangy Wolf here, but right now he's just kind of sitting, so there's a Ragged Wolf. So yeah, he's going to take out my Wolf Brother, which is not a huge surprise. And puts a Vetter up there as well. So he's trying to ramp up just a little bit. Maybe he has a God Hand in hand. But there is an Unleash Inner Power, which is going to help me out tremendously because it means I can kill that veteran. So let's see, what other cards do we get? Something that I can use three? Yes! Okay, so I can clear his board again here. How? Well, I can unleash inner power on this guy, but it's not going to do me a ton of good. But what I can do is I'm going to actually... Let me just make sure that I do my enchants right. I'm going to unleash inner power you. I could rally, but I kind of want to save that card. I'm going to Ranger's Bane you. I was just saying I wanted a Bane. I'm going to drop this Ragged Wolf down here to be a meat shield for the Kinfolk. And then that'll be three damage to this guy, two damage from the Vetter. So once again, the Ancestral Totem. It's one of those cards that I don't see everybody playing when I do watch some other streams of growth, but I like it and it tends to work very well for my very aggressive style. So there's another Sister of the Fox, once again fully expecting a Fertile Soil here if he's going to put her right there. Just waiting to see what cards he has available. So there's a wolf brother. Alright, so that must have come later. So now the question is, do I Crimson Bull and take out his wolf brother? I think the answer to that is yes, so I'm going to ditch the rallying. Alright, so we can actually- oh, we got a god hand too. Okay, so what we're going to do is pretty simple here. We're going to go ahead and Crimson Bull just to take out everything. We're going to Great Wolf up here just to see what we can do. And there's the Surrender. So a little bit of a quick game. I mean, it's I was just able to dominate his board. I didn't get... Well, I got some rating, so I'm 1671 now. And where does that leave me on my profile? It actually leaves me at ranking 900. Wee, okay, that's cool. So that was short, and I mean, that's what happens sometimes when surrenders are short and when I'm doing live commentary of games. 
So let's actually see if we can do another ranked match here. Just want to do one more just to see. So you get maybe a two for one episode here. Or this one could run stupidly long. I don't know. So just looking for the players. Like I said, I was just able to continue to take everything off of his board. And with the God Hand next turn, I probably could have ended that game in a turn. But just moving up rankings, I know a lot of people will say Monogrowth is strong. Monogrowth is one of the things that can take on the uh, order draw or the uh, growth order draw. And that's true, but there are, I don't win all of my games. Strangely, when I do quick matches, I tend to get my ass handed to me, and I'm not entirely sure why, but we're, oh, okay, well, hello again, apparently. That's odd. Good luck, have fun, and good game, last game. All right, well, so we're doing this again. We're going to go ahead and ditch the guy. Oh, wait, he's going first this time. So I guess maybe they really want us to be raided next to each other. But he could get a better draw here and possibly take me out. Or he's going to play a Grand Wolf. Or not a Grand Wolf. I'm saying Grand Wolf because his name's Grand Fruit. So right now I'm not getting a ton of creatures. So already my starting hand isn't as ideal as last time, but hopefully I can get some stuff on the board pretty soon to take out his coming swarm. Because it's kind of like I get one creature and a bunch of enchants when over half of my deck is creatures. So we'll see. He gets two vetters, so he's ramping up right away, which is not good for me. Not good at all. So let's go ahead and actually ditch the god hand. And I do want to try and take out one of these vetters because I don't want to turn three Great Wolf. So that's a lucky bane to grab there. But he's doing the right thing by protecting his guy. And he's probably putting a nut. Yeah, Kinfolk Brave right there. So he's already getting a lot of good cards at this rate. And I was like, well, sure, I'll quake you if that's what it comes down to. So rallying, don't really need that. Ancestral Totem don't really need that, so at this rate, I am uh, just going to be taking a beating at first. And there's not a lot I can do. Because once again, when it's growth versus growth, it's just a matter of who gets what cards when. So see, he's already got a bunch of little things on the board. These are the kind of things I like to get, and the kind of things that I got last time to keep up. So it's going to be a lot about the follow-up with this. And if I'm going to get overwhelmed or not, so... Let's see here. I don't really. The Crimson Bull's not really helping me too much. I am going to save the Mangy Wolf for another turn just because I want to take out this guy now. Because the more often you can take out those Vetters, the better. I would have loved to have used the Bane on the Kimfolk Brave, to be honest, but there's other creatures I can deal with that with. So he's moving them back. So he's already beating on one of my idols, and there's just not a ton I can do about it, but we have. We have two Mangies. Cool. So I'll be able to start doing some damage here. Let's go ahead and go ahead. Let's sacrifice the uh, ancestral totem for resources, and then we'll start seeing what we can do. So I'm going to play the mangy up here. Maybe take out a sister. Maybe if I can bait this guy to come down, which is probably exactly what's going to happen. So maybe I should have played him up there actually, but. No, he's moving him forward, so is this where he's going to put the uh, frost beard behind him? I don't know. But see, this is how growth games kind of work sometimes. You get some different hands and circumstances change quite a bit. So he is going to do some damage here, and I'm just going to take out his sister, which is okay. And he puts a vetter back there too, so... Don't really need the fertile soil at this point if I just want to hold on to my... If I want to, I don't want to sacrifice this guy, for instance. So we are going to go ahead and ditch that for cards. So Kimfolk Brave, that's good. Vetter of the Wild, that's good. Great Wolf. These are all things I want. But we're going to start by dropping the mangy up here. Just to make him decide how he wants to strike at my board. And I don't want these guys hitting me all the time. So that sister's gone. If I had put the Kimfolk Brave down there, I probably could have followed up next turn, but it's more important for me to ramp if possible. 
because I've got some catching up to do. He's got one idol on me right now. And he's got a pretty good combo of fast cards. So there's the Great Wolf. And how are we going to do this? Champ Ring. Champ Ring doesn't do me a ton of good here. I could sack for resources and play both of these cards this turn. And that may be better for me to do. If he has a rallying, I could be in significant trouble. But we're just gonna go ahead and see. Okay, he can probably kill this meat shield next turn. So I just I wanna get these creatures out. I don't like going to zero cards in my hand, but let's go ahead and make that happen. And I'm gonna go ahead and drop everybody up here just to have a little bit more board mobility because I can move them around as needed. So let's see, more stuff on the board. If he tries to attack with this thing I may be able to take him out, it just depends on what cards I get. So he's gonna drop. Okay, so he's going for the lane down there. He, if I were him, I'd move the Vetter up to take out this wolf. That doesn't seem to be what he wants to do. So is he gunning for my idols? Well, he's thinking about something because he has six. He has six resources that he's not using. So it's not going to be a god hand, but it could be a rally. Or it could be a rally crimson bull. There we go. And there is a... There we go. Nice move. So that's what happens when you put all of your eggs in a basket like that. There's not a ton you can do about it. I really need additional cards instead of the veteran, but the veteran's gonna... The veteran's gonna keep things from dying, so... There we go. So at least something else we can do. He can possibly kill me this turn. I mean, he's saying that he's done rather shitty today. GVG is all about what cards who gets when. Last game it was me, this time it's you. So maybe I should move these guys down here to support, I don't know, because he can take out this row. He can take out a lot of things right now. Because he's just got so many creatures on the board, and this is where, hey, a quake could be useful. And now he's moving up here, so maybe he has... Okay, so he's going to take out my entire row. And Bear Paul the Vetter, which is smart. So let's see, our Mangy Wolf is not going to do me a ton of good. There we go. I mean, is this going to clear my board? Yes. Is it going to clear his board? Yeah. But at this rate, I'm going to need to... Okay, I can't, I can't Bane, unfortunately, but I think I don't have a choice but to Quake this round. As crappy as that is, so... I don't want to lose everybody here, but... We're going to... And now I'm down to six resources. Let's go ahead and move you down one. Because maybe I can get something going here. The Quake is inevitable. Did that bring me back into the game? I don't know. I have two cards. He has two cards. He has more resources because he has the Vetter that he bear pawed. Good thing he bear pawed it or it would have died. So what else does he got? Uh, Jarl. Okay. It's a little bit of a scary card to have here, but... So you're the mangy. I could play that. I do want to Bane this guy. Whew, this is some tough choices. Because the mangy, the, the Jarl's going to be good for defense. But I can't play that and Bane this turn, which sucks. But I don't really want to get rid of him either. So let's go ahead and sack for resources. This is going to empty me of cards. But it's more important that I get rid of this guy right now. 
So I go ahead and do that. So at least this guy won't die. And maybe I can make the comeback? Maybe I can't. I don't know. But at least... What was I saying before? Quake, if you're way too behind, it may not be able to help you too much. But he's got some more stuff he can summon, so there goes that guy. So it's just a matter of sometimes you're just going to lose with all of this. And let's see, your Crimson Bull does me absolutely no good. And he is actually relentless. So let's play the sister. This is actually where I kind of wish I had Drydic Power so I could just lock him into one aisle, but I don't, so... Let's go ahead and play you here. Any damage less than you're doing right now is great. Vetter, let's play you up here. And we've got to start thinking about how we want to do this. So we're going to have to take out some crap here in a hurry. So it's here. he's relentless and he gets plus one attack for everyone that's adjacent to him. So he could possibly take out this node right here next turn. Notice I'm not defending it. So pretty much what I'm going to tell him is you've got to take out this bottom place. And it's entirely possible that he can. Actually, that may have been a mistake. I probably should have played the sister up there, but... We'll see if he sees my error. I mean, I'm behind anyway. Quite behind. So just waiting and waiting, and that's part of the fun of scrolls. I mean, even if it's just same player, two times... The games can go very differently. Like the first time I was just able to out-pressure him really, really early. And this time he's just had me on the ropes from the start because I just got enchants, enchants, enchants. So I have a feeling he has a rally coming up. Or Mangy Wolf, even better. So now he can take out everything. So see, not a lot I can do. <laughs> God hand, no thanks. Quake and God Hand. I don't really have a choice but to Quake, even though he's going to be able to end the game pretty soon, so no choice here, Blurg. I mean, the Quake's not going to kill anything that's on his board. So he can conceivably end this. Well played. Glad to run into you again. So there we go. I think this is going to be GG here in just a second. I get a bear paw and a god hand. Okay, yeah, so. So there we go. I'm not going to sit here and just be a little bitch. So. So here, he can take out all of this stuff, possibly. Yeah, there's absolutely no way I can stop him right now. But I'm going to go ahead and try anyway. Try as I might. So, oh no, my rating's going to drop. Oh well. I mean, that's the game. It's sometimes you win, sometimes you don't. You just keep playing. It's all good. So, oh boy, leeching ring. So, that's one way to make you all happy because he gets to leech every time he attacks. Leeching rings are so fantastic for relentless units. And there's officially nothing I can do to stop him now. Because even if I buff this guy to 6 health... Well, maybe... Yeah, he can shuffle these guys around. But we're going to play the units that we can. I mean, this is just delaying the inevitable. Yeah, he can do. Yeah, he can do enough damage here. But hey, that's scrolls. Sometimes, like I said, it's just growth versus growth. First match, I got the cards. Second match, he got the cards. Nothing, you, nothing really worth raging about or anything. It's just how it goes. So we're gonna see the inglorious end to my match. And there we go, defeat, and my rating dropped back down 15 points. So I'm actually lower than where I, be, or actually about where I began, so that's fine. But that's me with scrolls for today. This is way to fail, and I am back just outside the top 1,000 again. Who cares? We're just having fun playing cards, trying to get better as time goes on. 
So I hope you all enjoyed that match, or that double match, two-part episode. Hooray! And very good game, Grand Fruit. I will see you all next time.